Hi guys, Nicole Shaka here. Uh, we're going to tackle your hips, not literally, but <laughs> in a bit of a practice. Um, you may or may not need blocks. I'm going to suggest two, and you may or may not need a strap. One of those, just in case. We are going to start in a 90-90 position, and this position is derived from the FRC system, FRS system, um, functional range conditioning. I want you to be, be kind of mindful as you come into this. Your front shin bone, this is pretty specific. Your front shin bone is parallel to the front edge of the mat, and then your hamstring is perpendicular to that. Same with this back leg. I'm doing this on the side so you can see exactly what's happening. If you have labral tear, sensitivity in the hip, maybe um, FAI, you know that you have some sort of femoral acetabular impingement. You might prop yourself up on a block and see how that feels. And it should feel like there's a, a bit of relief there. You can also bring this block underneath this knee and see how that goes. What I do want you to look for in this situation, if you're fine, just stay where you are, is a bit of sensation in the back hip. And I'm just gonna say this general region because it could be different for all of us, but I'm asking you to bring your back leg into internal rotation, your front leg into external rotation. So for most of us, there's a lot of sensation happening overall. And then you might even start to drop this back buttock down just a little bit. So intuitively, you'll know if you've gone too far, you'll be like, eh, it doesn't feel like a wise choice because you're still going to be here for another 30 seconds, give or take. If you need to prop yourself up with a kickstand, if you find yourself leaning out, you can do that. You can lean back and kind of give yourself a little bit of, um, of a setup. You can also use the blocks if you like. Five more seconds. So just sitting in this position for about two minutes is super beneficial. Brings blood flow to the back of the joint capsule. It's a great thing. From here, you're going to bring your hand to your hip, and then you're going to rock your hip bone forward, and you're going to drop your sit bone back. It's just a rolling movement, the thigh bone rolling there in the joint capsule. Two more. Last one. Great, you guys. From here, you're going to bring your hands behind you. This back leg is going to lift so that the heel lifts up off the mat. And then keeping your chest upright as best you can, you're going to open without letting the front leg come along for the ride as far as you can. And then internally rotate and let the knee tap. Two more. Open, rotate. The heel stays lifted as far as it'll go. Front leg is out of the equation. Last one. Open, open, open. Good, and then gently bring it back. Great. It's going to switch sides, so maybe manually you bring your legs back together. I'll face forward for this side so you can see the setup head on. Again, this leg bone goes directly out. Sometimes I like to ask my clients to lift their arm and then look straight to the side and notice if their thigh bone is underneath it. That's a kind of a, a helpful little guide. And then same idea, if you need to be propped up on a block underneath your back buttock, that's what you do. So once this is set up, ankles are flexed, 90 degrees, 90 degrees. We hang out and hold. Same thing. Notice what you're feeling sensation-wise in the front, the middle, the back of this um, trail leg. Again, maybe the hands need to come behind you. It's a great choice. We just want to give our bodies time to sort of adapt to the shape, to understand that we're here for a minute. It's not just a 10-second little forward stretch, in and out. We mean business. <laughs> Good. The fact is, is that our shoulders and our hips are ball and socket joints, and they lose internal rotation very quickly because we don't use that range of motion frequently. So just sitting in this position... It's typically uncomfortable for us because that's what we're doing. We're asking the back leg to move into internal rotation. You're going to bring your hand to your hip. You're going to rock your hip bone forward gently and then gently rock it back. Sometimes I'll close my eyes just so I can bring my mind's eye to that sensation in the hip. How far do I need to go? Am I pushing a little too hard, a little too aggressively? You can always pull back. Great, you guys. Last one. 
Beautiful. Now hands will move behind you. Same idea like you did on the other side. You're going to lift the back heel, rotate this back leg without the front leg getting involved as far as it'll go, and then internally rotate. So if you've practiced with me before, you've probably heard my spiel. I was a professional dancer and, and still am every now and then. But we did not let our legs move into internal rotation. We spent our entire training with legs externally rotated. So there's a real deficit there for a lot of dancers, myself included. And from here, you're going to sweep your legs forward. I'm going to shake it out a second. And then you're going to come into a straddle. And it doesn't need to be like Cirque du Soleil straddle. It just needs to be a straddle. <laughs> Something that feels like there's a gentle stretch in the groin, the adductors there. <laughs> Good. And then once you're upright, sitting tall on your sit bones, this is where you may need your blocks. So I'm going to bring mine in front of my calf, somewhat in front of my knee. And then I'm going to flip. I'm going to mirror you, your left arm. And you're going to start to lengthen your left waist over the leg. And then maybe you place your forearm on this block. And then you reach the other arm up and over. So again, this is a big opening for this right side body. I'm reaching as far as I can. I'm not collapsing. So instead of collapsing, I'm trying to find buoyancy and a lift out of the hips. Good. Two more breaths. From here, slowly come back upright. And then you're going to switch sides. Again, maybe the block goes higher on this side. Right arm flips. It's the forearm bone that's going to be propped up on the block. If hinging this far is too far, you bring it closer to you. And then you peel open, open from there, right? Up and open from there. So the real important thing, and I mean, I think this goes for life in general, is just letting go of the aesthetic of what do you think it should look like. My body does certain things because it's trained and it's been stimulated in certain ways. Your body will do different things because you're training and it, you're training stimulus in a different way. So we're just mindful of that. Trying not to compare, trying to be cool with what is. Last big breath. Good, slowly come up right. Nice, you guys. Move the blocks out of the way. Maybe manually bring your legs back together. I'm going to do this on the angle so you can see again. We're going to bend the knees gently. You're going to take your hands about a foot behind you. And then you're going to pick up without touching your right ankle up and over your left knee. And then you might stay here. So right out of the gate, there might be a stretch in the tissues of your right hip. And if there are, I want you to just stay put. You could flex your left foot, toes to the ceiling. Notice how that changes things. If you feel nothing, then I want you to draw your hip, excuse me, your heel closer to your buttock and then prop yourself up even further. So we're looking for like a gentle stretch of some kind in the tissues of the right hip. And that's going to be different for everybody. And then from here, I kind of want you to move around. So maybe it's not just one direction where you feel a stretch. Maybe Moving the hips, you find a line of tension that's different, that's more intense, that could use a little bit more breath. And you hold that. Mm -hmm. Good, you guys. Last big breath. I'm going to slowly back off. See if you can take the ankle off without touching it. <laughs> Just to t test your active control of movement there. Opposite ankle up and over. Again, maybe you find a stretch right where you are. Maybe you flex the right toes to the ceiling now. Chest lifts. Or maybe you draw the heel right away closer to the buttock, lifting the chest. So this front ankle stays flexed, toes to the ceiling. And that just limits movement of your shin bone in the... Uh, and the knee joint, kind of lock it out. A little less movement there. Keep lifting the chest. And then once you're there, again, start to move the legs side to side. Notice where there's the line of tension. And most likely two sides are real different. Whole time, steady, full breath. 
miss you guys. Last big breath. And slowly come out of it. All right, this last one. I forgot to mention you need a wall. Nuts. You can do it without a wall. Let me show you how first. If you're doing this without a wall, you're going to rotate. Roll yourself down onto your back. You might take your two blocks. We're coming into a wide straddle. And then you might prop yourself up. Blocks to help. There. A wall. Who knew? So you can stay here with the blocks propping your legs. You can prop your legs up on a couch. Maybe you have two chairs there. (laughs) Otherwise, if you're using the wall, you're going to find your way all the way over here. Start sideways. It's the easiest way to get in it. Rotate onto your side. Legs kick up. Scooch your buns close to the wall and then let your legs open any amount. And we're here for about two minutes. So any placement of the arms that allows you to soften and relax. Again, this is just passive stretching. It feels good for the nervous system. Feels good for the physicality and the here and now. This isn't mobility training, right? So this sort of work doesn't give us long-lasting flexibility. We'd have to work a little bit differently for that. We'd have to work a little more actively. But there's definitely purpose for this. It feels great. It's wonderful if you've had a really tough training session. You worked out hard. You might notice after a few moments, you're overriding that stretch reflex, so your legs might let you go a little further. If you're on a block, you can always move the block down a little bit. Coming back to the breath. beautiful thing about a yoga practice is that it truly is about the breath. We get very distracted by the shapes, by the asana, moving towards certain postures. But every time you come back to the breath, there's a realignment with your subtle body, and that is what is important. Just a reminder, if you feel any pulling behind the knees, Shorten the stance a little bit or maybe bend the knees slightly. You got about three breaths here, y'all. When you're ready, bringing your hands to the legs slowly, manually bringing the legs back together. And maybe you roll out of this situation carefully, crawl back to your mat. (laughs) I'm glad I wore my animal print pants for the the drama today. You guys, you did it. Great job. I hope your hips feel nice, loosey-goosey. Wonderful work. I'll see you next time. Namaste.